Hi there. Welcome to this video series dedicated to my book, Blockchain Plus Antitrust, The Decentralization Formula. You can access all the chapters at the link in the description. Today, I would like to address how blockchain came to life and show that blockchain embodies the technical representation of a self-conscious philosophy. Blockchain started in a van. I mean, not really, but the idea came out of it. The van's owner is Stuart Brent. He lives in California, he's young and handsome, and he decides to tour the United States with a van full of books he wants to sell. These books explain how to build a cabin in the woods, hunt, make fire, etc. That's right, Stuart Brent is initiating the DIY movement. He wants to enable people by providing them with the right tools. His endeavor is quite a success, and in fact, he has no choice but to print a list of all the books he's selling. The list gets longer and longer, and eventually, Stuart decides to make a magazine out of it, the Wall Hearth Catalog. He prints over 1 million copies in just a few months. A few years later, in 1989, Stuart created the electronic Wall Hearth Catalog. This time around, the tool enabling people is a computer. The cypherpunks hearing well. They want to enable individuals by freeing them from the state. They make cryptographic methods accessible to civilians, publish manifestos, and declare their independence. In short, they want to create an ecosystem of their own in which I quote, the state is not welcomed. They succeed in part, although state and international bodies are very much active in the space and empowered in the cyberspace. And as we know, we also have big corporations who have captured the chunk of the value created. Comes Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi dislikes the existing financial system, and in fact, most centralized institutions. Satoshi ideas is elegant and straightforward. Satoshi wants to create an ecosystem with no centralized authority. Citing the cypherpunk's work, Satoshi publishes the Bitcoin white paper in October 2008. This nine page long paper introduces at the same time the concept of Bitcoin and blockchain, although the word blockchain does not appear. Satoshi is building on top of Stuart Brand's DIY idea that the cypherpunks have transposed to online activities. If there is no centralized power, no state, no big corporations will be able to take over. Put differently, individuals will be free forever. But as we will see together, things are a bit more complex. Let me take a first example. It also starts in a van. It's September 17, 2018. A blockchain developer who sleeps in California, facing the ocean, discovers a bug in Bitcoin. If exploited, users could double spend their token, meaning they could send the same Bitcoin over and over again. Should the bug become public, the value of Bitcoin will crash in just a few minutes. So this blockchain developer decides to let Bitcoin core developers know about it so they can fix the bug and ask Bitcoin users to update their software without telling them the reason why. And it works. But this shows that such crisis uncovers where actual power lies. So are blockchain users free from control? What is control in a blockchain? Where is it? Who is exercising control? To find an answer to these questions, be sure to check upcoming videos. That is all for today. Thank you very much for listening. Take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. Cheers.